And as long as it's my friends that knows about the Tourette's and what it is and what can happen, um, they laugh with me. Yeah. And um, other people that don't know about Tourette's or what it is, what it can be, what it can involve, they can be offended. It was just me constantly fighting and lashing out and and I, I, I myself looking back at that time, I feel like I was the worst person alive. Either my tics get, gets worse, uh, it depends on what kind of tick it is, um, but either it gets worse in, 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 in the terms of um, inappropriateness or uh, I can't stop ticking at all. And it, it it's it when it when that happens, it is so frustrating and exhausting, and it makes me feel like shit because I know that that person is either like not accepting of the ticks. It's a uh, it's nice to finally be side side by side with you, which is the equivalent, you know, the twenty twenty two equivalent of meeting somebody. <laughs> um, but can you tell us, can you give us like the brief introduction to who Moxie is? Uh, I got Tourette's. I take a lot. I'm overly friendly. And uh, I try to put myself in other shoes way too often to the point where I um, get really, really upset with them. And... Um, then I take off and I sound like a cunt, cunt bitch, and 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 um, it turns into a festival of laughter. From I I you or from other people, <clears throat> or both? Both. <laughs> right. Okay. Mostly because I get ashamed, and it's like, oh no, I didn't mean to do that right now. Not that I ever mean my mean to do my ticks, but like, it was like. I meant to be supportive and friendly right now. Instead, it turned into something else. Yeah. And as long as it's my friends that knows about the Tourette's and what it is and what can happen, um, they laugh with me. Yeah. And um, other people that don't know about Tourette's or what it is, what it can be, what it can involve, they can be offended. Mm. And that's not the easiest part to explain. No, absolutely not. Um, what at what age in your life? I imagine this is something you know you're born with and you have it your entire life. But uh, how did this? How did it first present for you when you were growing up? Uh, it started, according to my mom and dad, it started way earlier than I myself can remember. Um, I was constantly humming or making noises, or making pop sounds with my mouth. I was uh, biting my lips to blood, and biting my fingers, and uh, constantly, like, I, I, I punched, punched stuff. And, um, but the earliest that I can remember myself, I was four, turned five that year, and uh, I was speaking to, to my grandmother, and I couldn't stop cussing her out. And I called her the most awful thing you can call the sweetest grandmother ever. And she just, she took it like a champ. Like uh, uh, she's always been like one of my biggest supporters to the point where she, she just told, like, she, she, she didn't know about the Tourette's at that time. So she was like, okay, you have a lot on your heart. So just let it out. Yeah. And she's always been that kind of a person. So um, me with my family, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to the degree that I, I've never been told off by any of them. Because uh, they saw that when, when I s said stuff that I didn't have control over, um, that I got really upset with myself. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I could end up hurting myself because I, I felt like I needed to be punished. And I got hang-ups with, uh, like, this is really awful to say to someone you love. And, um, but they, they, they really helped me. And they, they understood that, okay, there's something going on. 
and she's having conflicting feelings about it and we need to figure it out. So they took me to a doctor and I got the diagnosis. And was, then I reached my teens. When you were, I was going to say, what, what age was the diagnosis? Uh, uh, I was in first grade. So I was seven. Right, okay. Yes, I was seven. <clears throat> so at, I imagine at various points in your life, it's caused different problems because you're in different surroundings, right? So different times. It's good. Like you said, you had a very supportive family about it. Um. I'm going to have a guess and your face seems to be suggesting I'm right here that school was a slightly different situation, maybe. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I was what? severely bullied. Um, I, I, I was I, I was like a really awkward kid um, <laughs> because I made weird movements. I said stuff and um, I was I, I was the awkward kid and people decided to pick on me and it got really really bad at a point and um of course i didn't tell my mom and dad because they threatened my mom and dad if i told them they would hurt them harm them and then that kind of thing so uh i i started avoiding like the bus stops on my way home mm -hmm. i went like half an hour to to a next bus stop so i didn't have to take the same bus as them but one day i um got off the bus stop at um my home and my mom decided that day that she was uh, would come and meet me at the bus stop. And uh, she then found me in the ditch with five other kids jumping on me and kicking me. And yeah, they broke my arm. <laughs> and uh, my mom and dad tried to take it up with the principal and the teachers, like the adults and everything. And what we got told then was that... Um, there was nothing to do with it because uh, the bullying or the kids picking on me would only make me a stronger person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my mom okay. and dad, they, um, <laughs> they didn't accept that. So we ended up moving and switching schools. And the new teachers got to know about my history at the old school and what happened there. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having the best time of my life. I got so many new friends that accepted me for who I was. And um, I ended up, if, if, if I ever saw someone getting bullied, I wasn't afraid anymore. Mm. So I ended up supporting them. And that took a turn for the worse when I hit my teens. Because with Tourette's, there's a lot of feelings involved. And the feelings get heightened especially anger and rage. Yeah. So uh, I was in a lot of fights at that point. So it went from kindergarten was okay, middle school and all of that, that was fine. Then I hit my teens. And uh, it was just me constantly fighting and lashing out and... and I, I, I myself, looking back at that time, I feel like I was the worst person alive. And it's really cringeworthy. Like, yeah, I, 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 get, I, I get a little bit upset thinking about it because that's not the person I am yeah. now, at least. <laughs> and I did end up getting help with um, um, behavioral therapy kind of thing like cognitive behavior th therapy mm -hmm. and um it, it was really helpful to 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 the point where i managed to control my emotions well not really control them but sort them before it got to the point where i had these huge explosions of anger and rage and i couldn't control myself right. and i ended up being the most patient person alive <laughs> <laughs> like that you you you'll have to take me off not take me off not not, not like a tick but <laughs> you ha you have to really piss me off over a really long period of time before i actually explode 
Yeah. Um, but when when I actually do explode, then I it's it's almost like a blackout, and it's not it's not nice. So um, there's a lot to it. <laughs> Have you ever kind of done any work to forgive yourself for how you were before you learned to control it? Because there's a very big difference between I'm doing this, but I could control it if I, if you know if I wanted to, and I'm doing this and I don't know how to control it there's a huge difference between those two things yeah like i when i th- when i think back about like about the stuff that happened and what i did i um i know i know now like that i i honestly i had no control whatsoever over what happened or how i reacted or what i did like even after it happened, I, I was completely baffled with myself that I had just done that, you know. Yeah. So now I don't, I don't be like I don't blame myself if I can put it that way. Yeah. But it, it's still like kind of shit to think about that I went through that and it's it it's like something that i wish i didn't have to go through yeah that's that that's the only thing yeah because I mean, a lot of people got hurt yeah yeah and i think it, it is it is hard to deal with like i i not, not to anywhere near this, this is the sort of same extent but like that with with bipolar disorder i have a lot i have a lot of bottling up and then and then when it gets released, it's, uh, you know, instead of being a, like a little Coke can opening, it's more of a hand grenade. Um, yeah. And and I know that there's been times that who I am when I'm there, like when I get pushed to that point, is is a very difficult person for me to accept as even being part of me, you know. Um, but I did actually, I had to actually go through all the guilt of accepting it as part of me. And then since, like, you know, since then, I've I've worked a lot on kind of, looking at trying to look at the times when i because i'll be i'll be completely honest i've been a shit and i've been complicit in being a shit at times in my life right so there's been times that i've been a shit and it's been my own choice there's been other times in my life where i've been a shit because my mental health pushed me to be a shit and i've you know i've i try to compartmentalize those two things i'm not saying and i there's an expression i like for this which is our mental health doesn't excuse um our actions but it does explain them uh, and I'm not trying to kind of excuse away the way I treated people in the past. But what one big thing I noticed that is if I try and guilt or shame myself for that, it actually pushes me more towards being that person now. So it pushes me. It makes me feel like the shittest person in the world again, which then makes me start acting like that person again. So I found that like a lot of going, OK, I didn't intend that. I didn't do that. Like I did, I did that, but I didn't intend that. How can I be better? You know, how can I let, and, and I found that actually being compassionate to myself for some of the stuff that I did when symptomatic keeps me a little bit more level now. And I don't know if that is that, I don't know if that would be the same, you know, for yourself or anything, but it's just something that I probably learned about four or five years ago that I wanted to kind of pass on. Um, so having come out of high school, what was what was kind of like the next step there for you? Or was there uh, still more at high school that we've not touched on? <laughs> oh, there's a lot that happened in high school. Like um, one time I actually got, because um, I had this teacher. The thing is, I went in an all boys class. We were... Um, learning about um, becoming electricians of um, various types. And um, I was one of two girls in that class, but, and, 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 and me, I, I, I dressed up in joggers and college sweaters, you know, or hoodies, like yeah. big, big baggy clothes. That, that was my style when I was a teen. I, I was a really tomboy. Like, no makeup, nothing at all. But, and the teacher kept constantly pestering me about how I needed to leave the boys alone. I was like, 
they're my classmates. <laughs> they're my friends. What, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, I'm, I'm not sitting on their laps. I'm not like ruffling their hair or anything. Like I'm paying attention to the class. I'm hanging out with them uh, like after between the classes and all of that crap. Yeah. Um, I'm not dressing inappropriately, not showing any cleavage or ass for that matter, but he was constantly on my ass. Ooh, ass. And, um, <laughs> I, 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 that went on for, I think it was four months and I told him each and every single time, cause he took me out from class into a little office to tell me off. And I told him, but I'm not doing any of those things. Like I'm paying attention to class i'm hanging out with my friends and that's it yeah and uh it was one time where i i guess my cup had reached its limit mm -hmm. and that's one of the only times that i've actually had a complete blackout right of rage yeah and it ended up with um y you know the the um cps yeah uh, one of those got contacted to the school, and she ended up coming to the school, picked me up, and drove me to the um, A and E. Uh, and they they were going on about how, how they were going to sedate me because I went ballistic at school. I was threatening to kill the teacher. I had wrecked supplies for a lot of money, and. Um, I came to myself when we were at the A&E and, &E, and uh, my, my mom and dad got called and uh, the woman from CPS told, told my mom and dad on the phone what had happened. And my dad just got this huge sigh of relief. <laughs> he was like, oh, thank God it was just that because <laughs> he thought I was pregnant oh. <laughs> and that, that would have been the worst thing for him. Um, Obviously, my dad knew about the situation with the teacher and it had been like brought up with the um, the principal at the school and all of that, but nothing got done with it. Um, so he was like, well, he got got what was coming for him. Like, uh, and he asked me, like, when he came came to pick me up, like, are you OK? And and that time I just broke down completely. And he was like, you know what? I thought you were pregnant. And that's like a thousand times worse at this age than you having a little blackout because your teacher is a dick. <laughs> I was like, yes. So um, after that, I went through that uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, therapy uh, session again to like kind of level my mind. And um, I haven't been back to school since. Right. So um, after that, it was just more of accepting each and every part of myself mm. and knowing my limits and knowing how to let people know if, if they cross the border with me, like, yeah. this is too far, don't, stop. So that, that's really important for me. And um, I got into gaming. So that was a huge part of my life. Um, that was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. Then I started going to events. Uh, I, I used to play on an esports team. And uh, we won a lot. And that was so much fun. And uh, after that, I got into Twitch and streaming. Which was a bad experience at the time a few years back. Yeah. Do you want to tell us about that? could do we, we, are, we are on twitch but i don't mind it's like they, they don't watch me <laughs> <laughs> no like the 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 um the tos for twitch was quite it, it was basically a one one shoe fits all kind of type yeah and and the communities were a lot like based on trolls and I was talking to a friend earlier um, through Whispers, and like I said to him, it was, they made a sport out of it to get people banned from Twitch. Right. And on my streams, they got to know that I had Tourette's. They got to know that I had the, 
the bad kind of Tourette's where you, um, you <laughs> profanities, you know, or inappropriate stuff. Yeah. Um, that kind of tics, which not many people with Tourette's have, but I'm unfortunate and do have that type of Tourette. Yeah. And they figured that out and they went to my chat and they, uh, did everything in their power to trigger me to say the most awful words. And if they managed to do that or managed to get me to say anything similar close to it, they, they ah, reported me. So I got strikes from Twitch. And um, back then, Twitch had no kind of support system um, to handle, handle complaints. So, like, you could try and complain about uh, having a strike on you, but it didn't. It didn't go through. Nobody was there to like listen to you or understand the fact that I didn't say this because of a normal tick that I have. I actually got triggered to say it. Yeah. And um, like having Tourette's in its own, you 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 end up saying stuff that you don't mean. You end up saying random stuff that doesn't even make sense. But it didn't matter. It was a one shoe fits all, and because of my Tourette's, I I basically got um, discriminated on. Yeah. And I ended up leaving Twitch due to all the trolls, the toxic communities, and Twitch being cunt. Yes, I'm not taking that back. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to. <laughs> uh, so. Um, one, that was that kind of I, I want to come back to this but I actually want to touch on something you just said then when you said the bad kind of Tourette you know in in the air quotes yeah and because I think that is what that's the that's the bad kind but it's also the poster child for Tourette's isn't it it's like what it most, is what the what when you say Tourette's syndrome to people it, like you know to people that don't know what it is the first thing they think of is random swearing or random exactly cases. um mm -hmm. and there's there's so much more to it than that so could you kind of give us a brief overview of like what the kind of what the different symptoms are like to get to Tourette's uh diagnosis you need to have um at least here in Norway on a DSM-5 you need to have vocal tics and that does not mean uh, profanities or inappropriate stuff. It means it, it could be like a humming. It, it could be clearing your throat. It yep. could be a cough, uh, a whistle. Um, it could be sniffing. Like just uh, normal sounds that you normally wouldn't think of. But when it happens repeatedly over time or over days mm -hmm. and, and you can't control it, you can't stop it. Well, you can, but you shouldn't. We can talk about that after. Oh, well, I, I, I very much plan to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's the motoric, uh, motorical th tics. Uh, and most people wink. They, they wink with one eye. They um, stick their tongue out or they get like a shoulder shrug or... There, there's so many movements and you got like um, the complex ticks, which could look like it would be a voluntary move, like something you do on purpose. And okay. that's quite a difficult to differentiate. Um, but yeah, th there's only like 10% of the people with the diagnosis Tourette's and you have to have both a vocal tick and a motoric tick and it has to last a year before you can get to diagnosis. Yeah. Anything less than that, or um, if it disappears and you never have them again, it's not Tourette's. And it's like 0 0.3 to 1% of the population, the general po population that have actual Tourette's. Okay. And then 10% of those people who have the, yeah. the, the, the bad version. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so basically 0.3% of the population, 10% of that, so 0.03% of people have that, yet when people think of Tourette's, that's what they think of. And that's 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 one of the reasons why, you know, like mental health awareness is just so vitally important because, you know, people just think of a condition and it being like, you know, that one size fits all almost as well, like that everybody's like this and you, people... If it is 0.3% of the population, like, you know, that's 
what that's three out of every a thousand is that correct like in terms of people that you meet are gonna have this which means you know how many of us truly interact even with a thousand people okay i know we're all streamers so we all try to interact with a thousand people every single day it's like come on bring them in by the thousands but like we know you don't make that many big true connections so chances are that someone isn't you know isn't going to really meet somebody with the condition and have the conversation and by the time that they do the only thing that they know about it is oh that means you swear a lot or like whatever it might be yes <laughs> um one thing I do want to touch on while it's while it's on my mind, because, you know, let's, while we're going down neurodivergences, mine is, mine is ADHD, which means that if I forget this point right now, it's never coming back, um, is is that I've wanted to ask you in particular with, with you being like at least bilingual, if not multilingual, I don't know how many languages you speak. Two, four. Four, four, of course you do. Um, because, and I feel like the lazy English person again. Um, <laughs> but um, so, and obviously in, in this, I imagine you, you said, you know, you said the worst things you could possibly say to a Swedish grandmother. I imagine, did you, did you swear at her in Norwegian and Swedish and in English? What, like, you, all of the above? <laughs> I, at that time, I, 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 I had learned... Um, the bad word in Norwegian for um, the female genitalia, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I think I called her a sour. That right. word. Right. Okay. So when you learn another language, does your brain gravitate towards those words that it shouldn't say? You know, the inappropriate words or like so, like for for the ticks to kind of come in when in a in a different language. Does your does like, because obviously, like, for us to try and understand that your brain, again, you're not intending to say all of those things. It's just, here it is. It's at the door. And in fact, it's already out the door before you've even thought about it, right? So yeah. when you learn another language, does your brain just, like, latch onto those things? And is there any feelings? Is like, is there anything that you're conscious of, are conscious of there that you can feel happening? Or is it just all going on behind the scenes? No, like, I... <laughs> That, that, that's the thing though like when it comes to to oh feeling a tick coming you do you do kind of have like this feeling of it like something something's coming right um i don't i don't have control exactly when it especially when it comes to the vocal tick mm -hmm. um uh, I, I don't exactly know how to explain that feeling like I, i've seen many others have explained it as uh, feeling like oh no you know what no my feeling is close similar to when you lay in bed and you suddenly get this urge to like oh my god my leg is itching I have to itch it yeah you know that kind of feeling and I know others have explained it like it, it's like feeling a sneeze coming like you have to sneeze yeah and but like the difference is that you can you can scratch your itchy place you you can sneeze like you can stop a sneeze. Um, not not always always that uh, smart to do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, with, with those itches, most of them you can suppress. Mm -hmm. um, but if you suppress them over time, you get physical symptoms, uh, exhaustion, like you get migraines, struggle more with sleep than you already do. Um, you can end up in tick attacks, yeah, which can be quite pain painful. So uh, I would never, I would never, ever, ever um, recommend to suppress any tick at all. Like. Um, I do suppress some tick, like, cause I, I go, I go to my, my son's schools. Um, we have meetings with them because he also has Tourette's and there's a lot to, um, talk about and get straight, you know? And, uh, when I'm in those meetings, I tend to hold back my most severe ticks, but yeah. I, I let out the less noticeable or less disturbing ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the the intense itchy feeling. That's how I would describe it. Yeah. 
So in those meetings, you're holding you're holding those those ticks back, like, yeah. and I take it there's then negative repercussions on you for having to have done that. Yeah, like you've just said. When you're in, when you so sometimes to go to go with that analogy of of scratching an itch, um, sometimes scratching an itch gives you a bit of relief. More often than not, it makes it worse. It makes it itchier. You know, it's like once you start, I've got psoriasis, so I know a thing or two about getting itchy. Um, so, it's, and sometimes it's like, oh, it feels good in the moment, but it just causes you to, if it, it causes you to kind of, and now I've got itchy on that. That I don't have psoriasis there, but I've just got itchy on that. Sorry. It's, no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm very, very suggestible. <laughs> but, um, so sometimes it just makes it worse, and sometimes it obviously it gets inflamed and all the rest of it, and it doesn't it doesn't always do the job, and uh, and other times if you are a, you know if you're able to kind of like dis- be distracted from it or whatever, it's you forget the fact that you're itchy. Now I've got an itchy eye. To be fair, if we weren't talking about itching, I probably wouldn't have even noticed the fact that I'm probably been itchy the entire time. I mean, I have I have this nice. ex- I have this extendable purple back scratcher on my desk for these very reasons you know so i can just get right in there um but so when it comes to like as you say there there's there's there are consequences for if your whole ticks back what i would like to know is if if when you are in a an open situation with people that you know and trust and that you know that you are free to let the ticks fly in that in that time does that make the desire or the urges or the number the frequency of ticks any different does that make it easier in that situation like because because you know that you don't have to suppress it does that make does that make anything any easier at all i mean yeah it 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 does but for me at this point because i i i decided a few years ago that i would stop suppressing my ticks full stop Okay. Unless, like, I have a meeting and I kind of have to adult <laughs> and uh, not be disruptive, you know. Uh, so for me, it. Um, I mean, for for others that haven't gotten that accept for um, their ticks, like I do, and their Tourette's, I, I think that would be the case for them. For me, it's more. I don't care at this point. Unless mm-hmm. you're a person that I really care about that I haven't spoken to, uh, like, you know, voice chat or, or been on a cam with or, or something like that, then I get a little bit like, oh, shit, you know? It's okay, like, so given the fact that you and I have never spoken except for like through ca- like for you being in my chat and stream and, and through the through the Discord and stuff, how's that feeling now? Feeling a little bit better now than it was in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like in the, in the beginning when, when you were like, ready for you now. I'm like, yes, I'm coming. I'm shitting myself. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I, was, I, I felt like I was starting to get a little bit sweaty. I mean, I took my hoodie off just before coming on with you. So, you know, maybe it goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I, just to take an example, like when I, when I, when I, care about someone you know and i i really enjoy their company like if i watch their stream or anything like that you can take the circus as an example and i jump into a voice chat there and it's the first time i i I talk to them and i speak to them Mm -hmm. or like i am already in that voice chat and they join then i get like i I don't know why or how but it's like my brain gets super excited and like every single rude and offensive tick that I can muster to let out obviously comes. And it's like, I'm so sorry. I just got excited because you joined and I'm so happy to talk to you for the first time. And that's happened quite a few times. <laughs> but they're all so accepting and, and it's quite delightful. Yeah. And it calms me down like almost instantly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I am getting slight, not so distracted by chat, but um, Ms. Panda's just put something awesome in, which I think is worth us chatting about. It says negatively reacting to someone's tick gives it fuel and can make it so much worse. And this this is something I kind of like to talk about in, again, a way that 
a lot of people in chat might maybe understand because not everyone's experienced ticks, but a, a lot more people have maybe experienced kind of having the way they talk pointed out. And I know, for example, me and B Unbox, who's in chat right now, I've talked about this in the past that I used to talk out the corner of my mouth and mumble a hell of a lot. And at any time that someone, that was because I, I was feeling nervous about speaking to a person. So I would kind of try and mask it out here and then I wouldn't make any sense. So then the person would need me to say the thing a second time. But when someone pointed out to me, why are you always talking about the corner of my mouth? It just made it worse. Like it made me more and more self-conscious of it. And the more self-conscious of it I became, the less I even wanted to interact whatsoever. And it's just became this, it's called, you know, it's called a positive feedback loop where you think it's a problem then you act like it's a problem and then people give you feedback that it's like a problem and then the whole thing happens. So could you talk on that at all for like, for when it comes to ticks, you know, like as you, you know, if someone's negatively reacted to your tick, what does that, what does that kind of trigger or cause in you? Either my ticks get, gets worse. Uh, it depends on what kind of tick it is. Um, but Either it gets worse in 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 the terms of um, inappropriateness, or uh, I can't stop ticking at all. Yeah. And it, it it's it when it when that happens, it is so frustrating and exhausting, and it makes me feel like shit because I know that that person is either like not accepting of the ticks. Yeah. Or doesn't know, and I have no chance in hell to explain to them at that time. Like, it's ticks. I can't help them. I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And um, your, your ability to even convey that message is is covered over by, by exactly. the Exactly. Yeah. It's completely gone, like lost in translation because of the ticks. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I, I often find that with bipolar is I can't really explain how I'm feeling to someone when I'm very symptomatic because when I'm depressed, I'm like, what's the fucking point? <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm manic, it's like um, I'm just gonna I'm just bouncing off the walls and just talking so fast that no one could even understand a word I'm saying. But like when I'm really symptomatic, I don't have the, I don't have the presence of mind to be able to do that extra ten yeah. percent of work for anybody. Um, is there any so on the flip side of all that is there is there anything that people can do to help you like is there anything that when 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 you are like when when it is happening or when you become more symptomatic is there anything if negatively reacting makes it worse what is the best way for someone to positively react is it is it reassuring you about things or is it just laughing with you or is it is there you know is there a is there a sweet spot for that this is the funny thing, because uh, I think it was a week or a week and a half ago, I came across a video on YouTube. Uh, that video on YouTube was about a girl on TikTok that had apparently fooled all her followers and said that she had Tourette's. And she got called out by multiple people, including some of her family members. But the thing is, I read that comment field under under that YouTube video and I got mind blown because the ignorance in those comments set me off. Right. I got so mad and so upset to the point because what you just asked me, I would, uh, my answer would be just laugh with me, completely like overlook it like it never happened or or just laugh like that reassures me that you're not offended that you didn't take offense to it that you understand that I didn't mean it you know and quite a few of my tics can be comical like I've been in in a VC with people and told them to twist their nipples multiple times like repeatedly I just nearly did I told you I'm impressionable <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you see so like and the reaction I got then was they laughed with me. They didn't laugh at me. They were like, they, they reassured me like, hey, I'm not laughing at you, but that is quite a funny take to have, you know? Yeah. So they, they, and that, just having that is reassuring to me. But in that comment field, it was like, yeah, no, I know someone that has Tourette's and it is so awful and so stressing and they hurt themselves and... Uh, they would never laugh of their own tics. 
um, that she, uh, the the woman in the YouTube video was laughing and whatnot. It was damning. Mm. Like people, people were basically telling everyone that that person does not have Tourette's because they are laughing about their own tics. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? If if I was to be upset about my own tics, I I wouldn't have a life to live. I would be upset on a daily, like constantly. Yeah. So I'd rather have fun and laugh about it than. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the, the important thing there is, is to always ask the individual. So like, exactly. so, and, and I call this the double spectrum. So mental health has a spectrum. And then within each condition, we have the spectrum that is we're all different humans. So like, I'm not the same as any other bipolar person, for example, you're not the same as, uh, you know, exactly the same as any other person with Tourette's or whatever. And some people might find that some people might find that laughing along with them is offensive. Other people might like yourself might find it to be very reassuring. So I guess the answer there is, you know, and I always say this whenever we discuss a particular topic on the podcast is, you know, we're only ever giving one person's account. So please don't take this as the entirety of the education that you need for the entire subject, you know, it's, um, but um, if you do meet other people with Tourette's, ask that question is what i would suggest is ask them that question what can i do to like make you the most comfortable like for example i only realized recently like and this is why we probably have the philosophy on my page of no matter where your mental health is today your value is always 100 percent. i only realized a couple of years back that the most important thing someone can say to me when i'm depressed is that i'm still loved and i'm still valued like because like i feel like my value is zero because i you know despite better knowing better i grew up with my value being attached to my productivity and when i'm depressed my productivity is non-existent so it was always like what how can we support you when i'm depressed and there was never a one-size-fits-all answer even for me you know it was like ah it depends on the date and they're like how are we supposed to know on each day it's like yeah you just gotta have to work it out and guess and uh, but now I've realized recently that, that one thing that's just reminded me of that, because I've got a brain inside my head that's trying to self-destruct at that point, telling me that I'm worthless on a, on repeat. So I need to hear it from somebody else. Um, so everyone in chat, you can totally do that for me next time I'm depressed. But <laughs> but yeah, so um, Cartier and George just put a, a question in chat that I'll do now, otherwise I'll forget that it's there. Um, how do you feel about sweet Anita and her bringing more light to Tourette's? Love it. Yeah. Like she, she, she has uh, brought up some some stuff on um, on her stream and on YouTube on her channel uh, about some topics and controversial stuff and. Uh, you know, that doctors and psychiatrists have uh, said. So uh, I I absolutely love her. Like the, the, the thing she does and the way she takes it, brings it up and um, sheds lights on it. it. It is amazing. Yeah. If anyone else in chat, by the way, has a question, please at me so I can find them easier. Because um, we will we will jump over to chat for questions in a little bit once we've um, chat, chatted a little bit longer. Um, okay, so so coming off the bat, I'm, now I'm going to try and circle back to where I was before all of my tangent questions kicked in. Um, so we were talking about we were talking about kind of the the original experience with Twitch. Um, in terms of obviously these, let's just call it personality stream snipers. Um, they are, they're basically yeah. trying to trying to goad you into um, goad you into essentially breaking terms of service. And um, so after after that happened, you you know you were banned. Um, like talk us through what happened next from there. No, I decided to quit before I got permanent banned. Right. I got banned uh, once and mm. I got my account back. And uh, like no matter how you try to bring it up, like, hey, I actually got a diagnosis that does this. Like it's a condition. I can't help it. And it's not my fault that some of the th things are getting said um, when people were triggering and all that crap. But after, um, after that ban and I got my account back... And I started streaming. Well, I tried to stream again, and the same thing happened. Like, people that, yeah, they basically tried to get me banned. 
And uh, instead of getting permabanned, I decided to quit. I um, didn't go on Twitch. I didn't go on any other streaming services whatsoever. I decided to just end it. Like I was still in an esports team at that uh, point, and I went to events. I played online events as well, um, but that was it for me. I uh, I couldn't do it anymore because no no matter how you try to bring it up, there was no support, no understanding, and it was like our rules are like this. You have to follow them. It's like, but I'm I can't. Yeah. So um. Then, then it was earlier last year, I think. I was like, I, I was on YouTube, I think it was, and I was watching a random video of someone playing a game, and I was like, because oh, 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 I really wanted to watch someone play that game, you know? Yeah. And I went on Twitch again, and I was like, mm, well, it's changed a bit, hasn't it? <laughs> and I looked up the game, and lo and behold, that's the first time I met Shiny Shinks. <laughs> and I jumped into her chat, and I can't I can't remember how it started or or what happened. But she got to know that I have Tourette's, and her whole community got to know about it. <laughs> and I said, I really want to play this game. It looks so awesome and so cool. But you know what? I I don't think I should because. I got this condition, which means that stuff may happen and I don't want you to get in trouble on your stream, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, that's when I, like, because I already knew Sweet Anita was on Twitch. Yeah. But she's, like, quite huge. And we know Twitch, like, they're huge whales, you know? Yeah. I'm not calling me uh, Sweet Anita a whale. Don't clip me. I did not <laughs> no, call no. her a whale. No, I didn't, um, I didn't take that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um... Favorite favoritism, um, but I I read up on the TOS again and I I saw that they had changed some stuff. So discrimination and and stuff like that against conditions were no longer allowed, for one. Yeah. And um, shiny and her community really they gave me hope in humanity again. You know. Because basically at that point, I only had my close family and my closest friends that were accepting of me and other people around me got offended. And then I got into gaming again and started to get to know amazing people. And it was just, yeah, I've had two streams, well, four, if you count the two from last year, but two streams this year. And, and this this time around, it is so completely different than it was when I, I, I streamed a few years back. Yeah. Like going from almost all the comments being um, people trying to trigger me to, 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 to take off, you know, to now only have kind people that are supporting me, that are talking to me and asking me questions. And, and it is just. I'm enjoying it. I can relax. Like, obviously, before I start the stream, I'm really, really, like, anxious and like, holy shit, I just had that really bad take a couple of days ago. What if it happens on stream, you know? Yeah. Um, But then I, I start the stream and it goes a little bit and then I just, I completely get lost in the game and I see the comments and I answer, I reply I ask them questions or something back and like it, it, it feels so much more relaxed and fun. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that that's kind of been what's come out of it for you. Cause I know obviously with before in the, in the original situation, um, you know, you got to, you got to quite a, quite a high position and it's, it's, it's like, <sighs> It's um it's frustrating, you know, because there's always going to be dickheads, right? There's always going to be people that like to bait people into saying things, even even like you know neurotypical people saying whatever. Like, um, let's face it, there's a, there's a million people out there trying to get you to say D's nuts all the time, um, but but it's when it's kind of like much more malicious and targeted than that, and it's like, and people don't. 
it's all well and good like getting someone to say something silly and having a laugh at them but like targeting someone to literally as you said before try and get them banned clip it send it off i just i just i just don't understand that mentality in the slightest but um please tell me you've please tell me you've got a decent set of mods <laughs> I got some amazing people. I do. <laughs> good, good. Um, because yeah, that's one. That's one big thing we need. That's one big thing we need. Um, especially when we get those those trolls coming in trying to mess everything up. Uh, Dandy has said, "Does Tourette affect you while writing or typing?" Yes, it does. It it honestly does. Uh, holding a pen can be quite challenging at times. Like, I really have to concentrate on what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to type and write. Like, I have to to know in my head beforehand, before I pick up the pen and, and start writing. <clears throat> like, uh, when I was a child, it was awful. Mm. I uh, had so many hissy fits and I was so frustrated because my hand wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. And then later on... Um, I got I got more of that control feeling of okay now I'm have like a tick is coming because when you're you're small like a little child you don't have that urge feeling like you do you you kind of grow that uh, as you get older mm-hmm. and um, now <laughs> sometimes I uh, don't actually feel the tick come at all so I can end up scribbling an entire page or rip it. And um, my phone, if I'm messaging people, texting people on my phone, I can end up tossing that. So my screen is completely smashed. <clears throat> um, so, um, yeah, that, it goes to everything that I have to do with my hands, especially yeah. if I handle eggs. <laughs> eggs is a huge thing. Right. Like me and eggs are not friends. Hmm. So I tell you, does that mean when you say everything you do with your hands, like including including eating, you know, if you're eating, you, oh, you, yeah. your food might end up somewhere else? Absolutely. Even drinking from a glass can be hazardous for me. Right. I can end up with a really wet lap or wet, <laughs> wet my entire self, like chugging the, the, like lifting the glass and like, hey, instead of like drinking, you know? <clears throat> Are there any, like, in in your lifetime, have there been any advancements made in the treatment of Tourette's? Yes, there have. Um, Just a few years back, the the main treatment, besides from a few types of heavy medication, uh, they started this behavioral therapy where they taught people to suppress their tics Mm -hmm. and it's only recently that it's come out like that people with Tourette shouldn't do that they should not suppress their tics uh in and um they've developed a new type of therapy where you um you learn about the different types of tic that you have uh if it's in your arm in your leg in your stomach shoulder neck if it's an eye twitch uh fingers anything and you can switch this uh like the most severe tick with the lesser noticeable tick okay and um uh, what's that called in 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 english ha- ha- habitual 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 uh something <laughs> hrt is the uh the thingy well, that's hormone replacement therapy in English. No, 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 no. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, it, it is, you know what, HRT. You got you Tourette's. got there much quicker than I did. I thought that if I opened a window, I'll probably end up having it all over the screen. And <laughs> Habit reversal training, is Habit it called? Habit reversal training, okay. Yes. So basically what you do then is, is you get to know the urge and the feeling of that specific tick. Like if you have... A severe neck tick, an example, and you want to lessen that tick by um, um, focusing on a tick that has the same muscle group. 
Okay. So you don't you you can basically like switch your ticks around so you don't get that severe like ouch neck tick an example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not a question, but Shadow says Shadow Cat says I know for myself from day one that I met Lottie. I've never seen her conditions or I've never seen her as conditions or disorder. I only ever saw her as a person, and she is one of the most amazing people I've ever met on Twitch. So there's a little bit of extra love for you in chat. Um, and Zen Jojo Poet says you are truly amazing person on all levels. Your light shines through to the world and makes it a better place. Uh, I've got to strongly agree with all of these assessments so far. Um, <laughs> I'm trying People to are going to make me cry now. That, oh, well, that's not uh, nice. I've got a box of tissues right here. But so <laughs> I <far>. don't. <laughs> so, honestly, stream rooms, stream rooms need tissues. This is a <laughs> well. My one certainly does. Um, is there anything else? Is there anything else like that we've not talked about that you think is important that you'd like to kind of share? I mean, not long ago, I got a whisper from someone and it really, it, it, it was grinding my gears to begin with up until it just felt ridiculous and it, it, it actually pissed me off. And I was sitting here and not, not, not to the point like the anger aggressiveness that I was talking about earlier, but like it was really messing with my emotions because like I said, a few years back, I decided to full stop, stop uh, suppressing my tics. Yep. And that's because I felt um, the harm it did on myself, like on my body and on my mind, I was exhausted, migraines, like every single part of me was aching because I ended up in tick attacks and they are, it could, it could actually end up looking like you're having an epileptic fit. Yeah. And uh, the way you pull pull your muscles and the strength you do it is painful, and and you you just end up in pain and you're so exhausted and yeah. But anyways, I got a whisper from someone that uh, said that they had ticks too. And I was like, oh, do you? Okay, well. And um, they they went on about yeah, they're doing this training where um, they're suppressing their ticks over time. Right. And they're like escalating the the uh, like how, for how long they're um, suppressing it. Yeah. And I told them, well, okay, if that works for you, then good. Um, I'm sorry, but that that won't do it for me because that that is actually harmful for me. Mm -hmm. And I told them why. And I told them about the um, habit reversal training. Yeah. Uh, and instead of like. Oh, oh, that's something cool. Uh, they were like, oh, yeah, no, that's not the thing that they're doing. Oh, I yeah. should do this. I was <laughs> are you for real? So, yeah, no, don't tell me to suppress my ticks. That's just my number one. Don't tell me to suppress my ticks. That. Yeah. It, it's almost worse than feeding my, 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 my ticks with a negative feedback. It's it, it's actually worse for me. Yeah. I've kind of learned to brush those type of people to one side because ultimately, usually they have the best of intentions. Um, and it's also if if you if you if someone else that has the same condition as you gets a level of success with like with a certain type of treatment, um, they almost become fanatical about it. And it's I think I've been that person in the past that like when I when like CBT really worked for me. It doesn't work for a lot of people with with bipolar, but it, it really worked for me. To the, and I got I was like obsessed with the fact that like if I'd have known this sooner, everything would have been better. And I wanted every bipolar person that I know to to go and do this right. <laughs> and um, so I've become that person. And then. Then I became on the receiving ends of what those people are like, and it's and now it's like going back to that whole thing of, you know, let's not like let's not talk about it, the one size fits all. The best we can ever do, we can make people aware that other forms of treatments are out there. But the second we say to someone, you should do this, like the mm -hmm. word the I, the words should and shame start with sh because both of them you should just shh about. <laughs> it's like so so. 
that basically whenever someone says should, I'm like, or whenever someone's, particularly when someone says this is the only way to do stuff, I switch off hard at that point um, because I know that I'm speaking with someone who's not interested in kind of, they're interested in me finding the same way that they did. They're not interested in me finding a way. They're interested in it, especially if it's a practitioner of the of the stuff. You know, it's a <laughs> the the. But um, but I has it. I would say it's like with with those kind of people. I've you know I've had people. Oh, you know, by you know, tell me bipolar's all in my head. It's like yes, it is. Apart from the fact that most of the time I feel it in my stomach and my solar plexus. But apart from that, um, but it doesn't matter. So it's like you know, if someone if someone had a broken foot, that's all in their foot. It doesn't mean that it's not still a problem. So yeah, I can understand being frustrated when 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 people come in and start telling you how you should do things. And I think if anyone is listening that feels like like if you ever want to pass advice onto someone like to pass it as an option rather as an a option rather than the option you know exactly like I, said, I think there's a, there are there are ways to show that you care for a person um and you're actually it's much you're, actually, oh. <laughs> you're much more likely to um you're much more likely to kind of have the person feel that you do care for them when you don't just try and steamroll and tell them what to do Suggestions, not commands. <laughs> um, does anybody else in chat have questions? Because I think I've, I think I've done all of mine. Um, I will just, I'll kind of go back to see. Um, I'll go back to see if there's anything else you want to add. If not, we'll plug away on the socials. Suck so a dick. <laughs> okay, maybe later. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> is is there anything that you want to put? Is there anything you would like to like anything else about Tourette's? Because I, again, I'm just I'm just trying to learn about it from the sidelines here. You from living with it, you know more what the most important parts are about it. I'm just see, like just be accepting and understanding. And if there's something you don't understand or you don't know or you're not sure of, ask. Mm -hmm. Like any, any, any one of us with Tourette's would happily tell you what is what with us. Because it is different from person to person. Like, like the thing, um, what's best for, for me on how you react to my tics could yeah. be completely opposite for someone else. Someone else could want the reassurance that it's okay. Um, they could want you to completely ignore it whilst I am more on the the just laugh yeah and I know that you're okay with it you know and if there's anything you want to know about Tourette's um just ask all right awesome right I get yeah, I know you've not got the tissues in your room but I'm going to read a couple more uh, <laughs> so Dom Cresco Spiro, who has got the most amazing voice in the whole world and makes me jealous every time I hear it. Um, Moxie is genuinely one of the most wonderful people I've had the privilege of meeting through Twitch. Uh, needs to give herself more credit. So just just get that sorted. Give yourself some more credit. Um, and uh, Shiny asks if you'll marry her. Definitely. So, yeah, sweet. First you ever marriage. Share bed with Kiddo and uh, Charlie, though. She's okay with that. <laughs> That's the first marriage proposal we've had on stream. Um, uh, Silly Shard says, Why is Moxie so cool? What's her secret? Whoa! I suck dick. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Ball, ball, balls. Shit, ball. uh, Sorry, I'm trying to say silly. Love you, silly. <laughs> Yeah, Silly has already made my day by calling me beautiful this morning. So, you know, that's good. You're gorgeous, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm sure there's, and Lindsay says, um, what for you, what helps the most? In what terms? What way? Uh, it, that's, that's, that's all I've got. So like kind of, I guess in you say, obviously we've talked about not suppressing ticks. Um, yeah. So for you... Like to manage your condition, what helps the most for you? Is that that's how I'm reading that question? Well, um, like I talked about earlier, I have been through like cognitive behavioral therapy when it comes to my emotions to con like not control them, but to um, 
know what is what in my head and how to sort it so mm-hmm. it doesn't overflow and get get those extreme reactions. Uh, so I've been through that. I've also accepted that my 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 my, my balls, my my ticks, my ticks, my my ticks are my ticks, and they come and they go. It's not the end of the world. It's just how it is. And uh, recently, now I also not just recently. It's a few months ago. I um, started on uh, medication to help my ticks. Um, so then then they're not so because I have I have a neck tick that is really bad to the point where um, my neck freezes up because it's like the tendons and everything just it's stressed stretch and then it like it, it feels like it shrinks and it swells up and it gets like inflamed um, and after my son started having a lot of ticks because you know ticks they can um, trigger ticks. Right. So him ticking off ticked me off, and to the point where we uh, we were basically ticking each other off, <clears throat> and um, that could be quite fun, but also exhausting. Uh, so I decided, since I am the adult, to try out medication for the first time. Right. So that's been helping me a lot. There, there, there's really not one medication that is meant for ticks in itself it's more of a it's meant for something but it, it's shown that it it can help alleviate ticks so they allow it sort of thing other than that it's just having good friends and family and, and stuff surrounding me that understands me that's all i need Amazing. Have you got the energy for a couple more questions? We've got sure. we've got a couple more in chat. Um, I'll go in slightly reverse orders because I think Spotastics is going to be a little bit of a longer answer. Um, and they've just started a hype train in the channel. <laughs> thank you, everybody. And Ooh. also, I, now that I'm breaking to acknowledge that, um, thank you, Shiny, for being ridiculously generous. Um, and as I always say to you, my love don't cast a thing. Um, Wabba says, genuine question time. Is it okay to respond to ticks like joke back with them or does that hurt? Such as the suck dick ticks. My natural response is be like, I mean, maybe sometime. And I think that's a very genuine question because that's literally what I responded with. I said maybe later um, when you said it. So is No, like- honestly, that's perfectly fine for me. Like I said, it, it, it's, it, it's the same as with laughter. For me, that means you're accepting it, you're not offended. And that's yeah. a good thing for me, you know? So for me, yes. For others, could that could be like damning. <laughs> yeah. So as we said, I know Wabba's only just come in because, you know, Wabba was busy keeping me up until three o'clock this morning. Um, read into that what you will. But I'm giving that one out of context. But um, <laughs> but basically, um, we did talk about that earlier in the interview about the fact that it's, again, as per usual, no one size fits all. Uh, so Spotastic says, I'm a neurodiversity advocate and on the National People with Disabilities Management Team for the firm I work for. What would be the most impactful accommodation that would allow you to bring your best and authentic self to work so what accommodations i think could be made in the workplace for people with tourette syndrome i think is the, the, is the uh, a quiet room where you could um retreat and take off because obviously like this is something that i fought for um for my son to have in school it's it's uh basically a room where you can go in and relax recuperate like you 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 can take off and get your energy back your focus back because a lot of people at work you have to be professional and um obviously (laughs) it's hard to adult and do your job when you take off like a crazy person you know and and take that crazy person in a in a light tone i don't i don't mean and i don't mean it in a bad way but having having a quiet room where you can retreat and just take off and relax and don't think about like all the different people that are looking at you thinking stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so that that would be helpful. And then then you can come back to work and you can do your job better instead of sitting there and possibly holding back ticks 
or having thoughts, constant thoughts that are taking up the place instead of the work thing that you're supposed to do. Yeah. <clears throat> that people are staring at you, thinking whatever, you know. So um, having a quiet room with fidget toys, maybe, to distract yourself. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing with this all the way through. <laughs> but yeah, amazing. Okay, one final question and uh, and then we're uh, we're going to go back to the check-in and see how everyone's doing in chat. Um so you've got your back your back stream, you know, you said you've done two two streams this week this this year and you know, you kind of you can what is so what is next for you? What is next for me? Yeah. Well, I've heard that what's next for me is uh to reach affiliate but no, um, was it two streams ago or three three streams ago that I told you that I got the offer to um, become a spokesperson for children with Tourette's? Yes, it was it was the one before my birthday, so the Friday yeah. before last. Yeah, I've um, um, have you because you hadn't accepted that offer yet? <laughs> no, I haven't quite. Uh, I have I have uh, spoken a little bit more with the people. And um, something may be happening. Amazing. And something may come to the stream as well. Amazing. I'm excited. Well, can I just say, you've been an absolutely amazing spokesperson for Tourette's for today. And I feel very privileged to have been able to spend this time hanging out with you today. And I think... I think you articulate yourself absolutely wonderfully. Uh, I think you get your points across. I think I could listen to you all day. And actually, I'm returning that compliment to you because I think you told me you told me that about seven months ago. So, um, so <laughs> yes, I remember things. Okay, um, <laughs> you except, got better memory than me. <laughs> except for when I don't, and then people get really offended when I don't remember things. I just I'm selective, not deliberately. Um, but thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. I really look forward to seeing kind of what happens with the stream and what happens with this. I think you should go for it. I remember you saying the other week, you know, why should I go for this when even, you know, my son's school won't listen or whatever at the time. And the, the thing I would say to you is, okay, if one school doesn't listen, but you talk to 50 schools, if five of those schools listen, that's progress, you know? Mm. And and um, from one, I, you know, I, I speak in schools and have to go, I said, you know, one person said to me about two, three years ago, they were like, it must be the most rewarding piece of work you do. And I'm like, not necessarily, um, because you never know what impact you're having in schools. You know, you, until like months down the line or years down the line when someone says that thing you said six years ago helped or whatever it might be. And you have to go in, you, fe you often feel like, I'm talking to these people about this thing and it's not, you know, going in or whatever. And it's because, you know, kids in school, I mean, oh, you'd be speaking to the teachers and accommodations and stuff as well. So, but kids in school is just stare you like this, but, um, but, but it's that whole principle that we often talk about, which is if it helps one person, it's worth it. And, you know, I think, I think you, you, you I think you're the perfect person for the job. So I'm going to be all full on team Moxie. Uh, other than so on Twitch, it's Moxie Lena X. Is there anywhere else where where people can follow you and such? Um, I got wait. Twitter and TikTok. Are they both the same name? No. Oh, I. Might, Why would they be that? I might have tagged the wrong person in a tweet today, then, because I said no. You tag no, no, no. My Twitter is the same. My Twitter yes. is the same. Because <laughs> I, I set that to auto tweet from my stream deck, so <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, crap! Yeah. I've started streaming like four seconds and I've not set up my go live tweet yet, which is always the no. Case. It's just my TikTok that is different. Is, I is, think is that Lottie Lena? I think it's Lottie Tick Selena. Lottie Tick Selena. Okay, um, I think I will have uh, if anyone from the mod team or anyone in chat that's really quick with keyboards and such can go and get. Um, I nearly called you Lottie then, but it's still it's still yeah, a, it's fine. still allowed, right? Uh, if anyone can go and get uh, uh, Moxie slash Lottie's uh, information from TikTok and pop it in the chat so people can follow her over there. Um, I'm gonna say thank you one more time, and then I'm gonna go to me. Be, I'm gonna go to me. Be right back screen, and then go and then go to the toilet. So uh, thank you again for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. It actually meant a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it meant a lot to have to have you here. So 